So let's suppose that a person gets inside a Ferris wheel and the Ferris wheel begins to rotate with some rotational speed. So the person's rotational speed is exactly the same as the Ferris wheel's rotational speed. Now we want to answer the following question. Is the normal force that the seat exerts on the person greater at the bottom of the arc or at the top of the arc? So to answer this question conceptually, we must examine the free body diagram, the force diagrams at the top as well as at the bottom. So let's begin with the top. So at the top, we have two forces acting along our y-axis on our person. So let's pretend this is our person. So, we have the gravitational force which acts downward along the y-axis and we have the normal force created by the seat on the person that acts in the opposite direction upward along the y-axis. What about our acceleration? In which direction is our person accelerating at the top? Well, at the top, it's accelerating directly downward. So our radial or centripetal acceleration of the person at the top points downward in the same direction as the gravitational force. What about at the bottom of the Ferris wheel? So at the bottom, here we have our person. Once again, we have the normal force that points upward and we have the gravitational force that points downward. But now, because we're at the bottom, our person is accelerating upward because we're at the bottom of our arc. So, uh, here it points upward and here it points downward. So let's choose in this position, the downward direction to be positive, and in position number two, the upward direction to be positive. So, let's sum up all the forces acting on our person along the y-axis for our top and for the bottom uh, position. So, sum of all the forces acting along our y-axis is equal to, so we choose downward to be positive, so the force of gravity minus the normal force is equal to mass times radial acceleration. Now, what about in the second case? Well, once again, the sum of all the forces acting along our y-axis is equal to, well, now we choose the positive direction to be upward, so the normal force minus the gravitational force equals mass times our radial acceleration of the person. So, let's rearrange our equations for in both cases and let's solve for the normal force. Well, in case one, our normal force is equal to the gravitational force minus m times our acceleration. What about for this case? Well, at the bottom, we have the normal force is equal to mass times our radial acceleration plus the gravitational force. So we see that at the bottom of our arc, the normal force is greater than at the top. So if we plug in some numbers, we'll see that this is in fact the case.